Hey everybody, this is Jennifer Priest and I am here with Heather Mann. You might know her from Dollar Store Crafts and her new book, Craft Fail. I always hold stuff on the wrong side. <laughs> um, she is a super awesome crafter, DIYer, blogger, mom. She has her son with her today um, and we're going to hang out and talk about crafts. Yeah. So um, Heather, can you tell us a little bit about like what you're working on and where everybody can find you? Sure. Um, you can find me a few different places. One of them um, is craftfail.com, and that is where we post about um, <coughs> crafts gone wrong. And then you can also find me on dollarstorecrafts.com, um, where I post about yeah. cheap crafts, cheap fun crafts that are still cool, even on a budget. And um, and then I'm pretty active on Facebook. There's a Dollar Store Crafts um, Facebook group that anyone can join if that's the kind of thing you're interested in sharing dollar store craft ideas. Um, and then I write freelance. I write freelance a few different places, but those are the main places where I call home. I didn't know that you had a Facebook group, so that's good to know. Um, I really love your Facebook page. There's always amazing ideas on there. And a couple days ago, you shared um, these maxi pad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, someone in my group shared, that was actually from the group, somebody shared um, these maxi pad slippers, it, kind of a gag gift I guess, or a white elephant gift idea, and so I knew it was kind of um, an edgy idea, so I, I put it out on my Facebook page to see if people would, you know, debate about it or get mad or... And yes, some of them some of them were grossed out and offended and a lot of them thought it was funny. So overall it was successful. I think sometimes it's good to shake things up and and put a controversial post out there once in a while. Yeah, so your book has like a ton of controversial posts and I know um, for crafters like at least my experience, especially in teaching classes, is that crafters really struggle with stuff being perfect. Like it turn out exactly right when they first try it and your whole book is about like how that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, I think there's I think there's a few different kinds of crafters. I definitely think one of the prototypical crafters is the perfectionist, but I think there's also the messy artist type who kind of like thrives on happy accidents and can make and turn any accident into something cool. Um, and then there's the rest of us who have to <laughs> try and try again and then after a few tries maybe our crafts start looking a little better. So I've I've always wondered this about you and I asked you this before because I know you make a ton of stuff on your blog and I know that there's some other people that that um, contribute but I always wondered what do you do with all the dollar store crafts that you make? So unless it's really special or turned out really well I usually just either give it away or throw it away if it's something that's not that cool, <laughs> a true confession. Um, and then a lot of times I end up with extra dollar store stuff that I have to um, donate to because I just, sometimes when I'm making a project I get more than I need because I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to use. So I guess I could return it to the dollar store, but I usually just end up donating it. Uh, sorry, my son's playing. <laughs> it's okay, it's cute. Um, so, like, where did you get the idea for doing the dollar store crafts and then also the craft fail uh, website? So, originally, the dollar store craft idea, um, it was after on craftster.org, they had this $5 dollar store challenge on there. It was, like, in 2007 or something. Um, and I just really liked that challenge, and I, I love the constraints of just having five bucks and having to go to the dollar store. So... I, I was I just thought one day I thought oh it would be cool to have a whole blog that was all these projects but I didn't do anything about it right away and then like I just kept think like sometimes ideas kind of stick with you and you kind of keep thinking about them keep coming back to them and so after maybe a month of it coming back to me every couple days I decided to just quickly start a blog and see if I could um, find enough crafts that qualified which at that time it wasn't really a thing so it wasn't as easy as it is now but um, yeah so I found I found a handful of crafts and then I went to the dollar store and spent ten bucks and did my first um, craft project and yeah so that was that was uh, 
That was in 2007, the end of 2007. Um, and then, I'm sorry, was there a second part of the question? Yeah. <laughs> so um, so you, you did Dollar Store Crafts, and that's where I met you was after you'd been doing that for a while. But then you started this other site called Craft Fail, and that's, that's kind of where your book came out of. And um, I wanted to find out, like, why you started that, and do you actually find enough people posting their crazy stuff online to, like, fill a whole blog? Okay, so um, it was probably maybe a year and a half after I started Dollar Store Crafts. I'd been crafting for Dollar Store Crafts for a while, and um, after a few failed attempts at crafting, I uh, I just thought, oh, it'd be funny to just post these online, and we could all laugh at them. And I was with some other crafty friends, and I mentioned it to them, and they all kind of laughed at the idea. So I went home and started the blog right away because. I figured if they laughed at it, at least someone else would probably laugh at it too. And um, and then the way that we get stuff for it, originally it was something where I invited other crafters to um, actually post on the blog themselves, like get a login to the blog and do it all themselves. But I think it was like too much work for them, so we switched it over to submissions. So most of the stuff that we have on the site now is all exclusive to our site, and people just email us the pictures of their failed projects and the story behind them. So, yeah, we definitely have enough to fill a whole blog. So, like, I see you're wearing this necklace. Did you make that? Oh, yeah, I made it. I thought I would wear my um, kindergarten art teacher outfit today with a colorful <laughs> cardigan and <laughs> colorful uh, necklace. But, yeah, so I did. Yeah, like you made the necklace, so how did, or do you want to share how you did that? Oh, sure, yeah. Okay, here, I'll hold it closer. So all I did was I used these these acrylic shapes. They're um, Mod Podge brand, and they're called Podgeable Shapes. And I just put strips of washi tape on it, and then after that I put Dimensional Magic, which is like the glaze that is made, that Mod Podge makes. Um, put that on there, let it dry overnight, and then I just glued these little... Uh, cabochons or however you call them, little chrysanthemum things on. And I drilled holes in the edges and then just attached it to a chain. That was it. So you can that stuff you can get at Michael's, right? Yes, yeah. you can get all of it at Michael's. Cool. I've seen it and I haven't tried it yet. I bought some of those molds. They looked like really cool. Oh yeah, they are. My my nine year old son, eight year old son loves them. Sorry, he's eight. <laughs> That's awesome. So what are you going to be working on in 2015? Well, I have been doing videos for the second half of this, this year, 2014, and I've really been enjoying it. So I'm hoping to do more video tutorials and um, just kind of get myself out there a little bit. I'm not, I don't see myself as like an on-camera person that much, but I think that with YouTube and um, just the way that online video is right now, I think there's room for everyone, no matter how awesome you think you are on camera. <laughs> so um, I'm going to do more of that, and then um, I'm going to try to pitch another book, probably for Dollar Store Crafts, and then um, I'm just going to keep doing, I'm doing a, a lot of freelance writing. I'm, I write for my local newspaper, I do crafts for, that, for the Statesman Journal in Salem, Oregon, and um, I also write for I Love to Create, the craft brand, and also Doris, the craft brand. So I'm having lots of fun doing that. That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> so like YouTube, I, I agree. I actually started my channel like, it'll be three years ago in January. Um, and I kind of felt the same way. I felt like there's room for everybody. and. I look at some of the stuff that the other YouTubers do and I get really inspired and feel like, okay, I gotta like learn new stuff, like how to edit and how to how to show things in a different way. It's it's been a lot of fun. Um, it's really a different crowd than like Facebook. So it's kinda neat to see these people that they only go on YouTube for crafts. Yeah, so. and I, I after doing, I don't know, a hundred videos, I finally started just getting out of my shell a little bit more. So I I don't feel as awkward being awkward on camera now, I just I kind of go with it, and those ac actually end up being my favorite parts of my videos. So I'm just trying to embrace um, my awkwardness and uh, 
<laughs> just go with it. No, I think it's good. Like, I think it's it makes people relatable, you know, because, like, I'll watch some YouTube videos, and sometimes they're, like, too real. They have, like, half an hour of personal, like, stuff in the beginning. <laughs> but other ones, the person seems so perfect, and it seems like that's not attainable, you know. So I think yeah. it's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I like to be kind of self-deprecating. I mean, I don't think that I'm the awesomest thing in the world, so I kind of like sharing that I'm not, and I guess that's why why I really like Craft Fail and why I was the right person to write the book is just because I think it's important to be not perfect, and I think that especially with Pinterest, just there's such an emphasis on this perfection and everything looks perfect, but it's not actually perfect. So I think like the truth of, the truth of life is that Sometimes you have video interviews and you have a baby who's fussy. So, <laughs> you know, everything's not perfect and that's great. I mean, that's that's how you learn, that's how you grow as a person and I think it's important for people to um look for chances to not always be perfect and, you know, take that pressure off of themselves. Yeah, I agree. I I really appreciate that about your brand and I saw um one of the videos you just made that I thought was super cute was your time lapse Christmas tree decorating. <laughs> and so I recorded my Christmas tree decorating. I was like, I'm so doing that. <laughs> I saw someone else do it a few years ago, and it was like the coolest thing. So I, we managed to get it together in time this year. And yeah, I thought it was really fun to see a time lapse. Actually, I'm kind of into time lapse. I think it might be cool to video some crafts time lapse too. Yeah, those are fun. Well, um, tell us really quick, I have a copy of your book to give away, but for um, whoever doesn't win it that wants to buy it, I think it would be a great gift for the holidays um, for crafters. Where can they find the book? You can find the book at pals.com. I have to give a shout out to my Oregon Pals bookstore. Um, you can also find it at barnesandnoble.com. You can find it at IndieBound. You can find it at booksamillion.com. You can find it at Amazon. And then you probably will see it at your local bookstore, too. I know that um, my local bookstores have it, so hopefully yours will, too. Awesome. So thank you so much, Heather. This was fun talking to you, and I hope to see you at the Craft and Hobby show soon. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll put a link to Heather's um, info and her YouTube channel down in the description so you guys can go check it out and connect with her there. Yeah, Thanks. thank you so much for having me. All right, have a good day, Heather. Bye. Okay, bye.